I just yeah. wanted to make sure, Mr. Gibbs, I think I found the adjustments that you had made, um, in, but I won't, because they're, they're all the same color in the red line version. Um, so the, in the third paragraph, at the end, you added the part, the parentheses. Right, the Pol parent about the, any policies that are under information are considered agenda items, so okay. the public would be able to address those as agenda items, yes. Right, and then the, uh, the other things were the one about the signs being just not above shoulder level, correct? Yes. And then the, I think we added in the part about people not being able to um, give their time to others. Yes. Was there anything else that was changed nope. from the last time? Nope. Okay. That's what I, I just want to make sure I call it every call it. I'm good. Awesome. Uh, Ms. Jenkins? Yeah. Um, I know I'm a minority when it comes to this, but I just wanted to bring it up one last time since I brought it up last time we discussed this, uh, or probably the original time that we had this conversation. Um, the only thing that I'm just a little bit uncomfortable with is the part where uh, the non-agenda item speakers are, are coming to speak to us. Um, I've stated this in the past, and I just want to say it one more time for you guys to reconsider. But I, I don't really see the purpose of the camera being turned off. Um, I was very clear about that when it was first brought up. I personally just think it brings more uh, tension and divisiveness to our community because it looks like it's being interpreted as if we're doing that intentionally to uh, hide something or I don't know. Um, and I, I just don't see the purpose to it. I, I've said to you guys before, you know, our YouTube hasn't had so many views unless it's some huge hot topic conversation. Uh, I, I don't believe people are really relying on that. They're filming it with their phones anyway. Uh, so I don't really think it would be hurtful for us to be recording it ourselves from start to finish. Um, that way we have documentation of it as well. But again, just to kind of turn down the temperature, uh, because clearly this policy is uh, likely to be a conversation this evening uh, and in the future. And um, again, I don't really see the benefit of turning the camera off other than potentially making people upset. So thank you. I just, I, again, I know I'm a minority with that, but I just wanted you guys to reconsider that one more time. Uh, Ms. McDougall, did you, Mr. Susan was waiting until you were done. No, did no, you no, have I'm, any? I'm, I'm, okay. I don't have any questions. Mr. Susan? You just go ahead. I'll I don't have on. any questions. I'm, oh. I'm good. So when I was looking at it, we've got 10, 10 speakers to 3 minutes, which is 30 minutes, 20 to 2, which is 40 minutes, and then 21 at 1 um, would revert us back. So, like, I was trying to look at it. Like, total amount of time spent in this room with public comment and stuff like that. Um, the more people, if we did cut it at 21, there's a good chance that if there's, like, 23, I know we can extend it and we can do those things, but there might be a chance that we're only waiting for public comment for 21. So I wanted to see what you guys thought about this, which is if we did 20 at three minutes, which would be one hour, 30 at two minutes or higher would be one hour. And then once it hit 40, you got one, which would bring us into the space. Because I started looking at how many people actually speak, and we do get some that are like at the 50 mark, at the right, and that's gonna blow out. But this keeps us like 96 to 97 percent of the time within a one hour period and i'm okay with an hour like i'm okay with that but like if we do like 20 at two minutes 23 at two minutes we're under an hour 21 at one minute it just starts giving that thing so i'm okay with any kind of other idea here but i'm okay with an hour's worth of um you know what i mean public response but i think that this sort of starts getting under that hour that's all I didn't know what you guys thought about that. It just kind of allows more public speaking to keep us within an hour for train frame period. The other way, and with the, you're a, you know, the other way is is that we're trying to get it right around 30 to 40 minutes. That's all. I, I just would say I think that was the general idea of the the breakdown the way that it is because our policy already said that public comments would be limited to 30 minutes and to, except for by vote of the board to extend it, which is what we do. Um, so I, I think that generally try to keep it around the 30 minute mark. And of course, one of the changes that we're making is to make those rules only for agenda items, which would be even fewer uh, speakers in that particular part of the agenda. So it might be, I mean, some nights we might, you know, like when we had our, our mass meeting last week, every single person was speaking on the agenda. So that, you know, something like that would be, would be different. But um, I, 
to go back to, I, I guess I'm remembering that conversation differently, Ms. Jenkins. I, um, I think that when we talked can about we, the, can yeah, just stay can on stick on, yeah. Like, sir, if anybody won't support it, we can just yeah. move on. It's I, okay. It was just an idea. I mean, we got to pick, an, as far as that, my thought is we got to pick a number somewhere to be the break off. The third one is going to be potentially less time. Whenever we go to the one minute, it's going to be less than the mm -hmm. maximum for the two minutes either way. But I mean, I think that just kind of keeps us to the 30 minute time that we already had in our policy. I don't have a preference either way. So Mr. Susan, the only, the only thing that I would say is that Ms. Ms. Jenkins had thrown something out there and no one had spoken to that yet and then we went to yours. So I'm, I'm fine if you want to just limit it to one issue at a time. Um, the other thing that, okay. that yeah, that. no, that's okay. The other thing I would ask is um, Mr. Gibbs for clarification, changes made to the policy today would require starting the process over, correct? Oh, I'm so not there. It should, yeah. So if we change the time frames or we change the language on the recording, we would have to re-advertise for... You would put it on a new cycle, yeah. Right. So can I say something? I, I apologize. Ms. Jenkins, you had said, I thought you were just making a statement that you didn't agree with it, but I didn't know if you were making a statement to actually change that. So I'm sorry. If you wanted to bring that up, then I would make that discussion before mine. That's all. I didn't mean to. I just thought that she was just saying, but if that's part of the discussion, I apologize. No, yeah. it's fine. I, I was making it more just like a statement because um, I felt like we talked about this twice and I didn't really think anyone was going to change their opinion, but I just <laughs> wanted to say it publicly because it wasn't in a publicly aired meeting. So, <laughs> Got it. Right, I think we're all good. So, um, on the, on Ms. the Campbell. topic of that really quick, I think because we've been getting a few emails about that, and I think part of that is a misunderstanding. Um, there was at least the couple that I, have, I haven't been able to reply to them yet because I was out of town last week, but um, people concerned that we're actually going to carry out business or going to miss something rather than it be we're going to listen and we literally can take no action based on anything. It'll just be hit the final gavel after the last speaker. Even if we say, oh, hey, I want no, we won't be able to do that. We, we're limiting ourselves to any, any words or anything besides meeting adjourned after the last person. So, um, you know, I, I have, I find myself, um, again, this is one thing, I, I, I'm the one who asked for us to, to still include, I'm one of the ones, I'm not gonna say I'm the only one, who, who felt like it was important to, for us to have the non-agenda items in the board meeting, not before, not limited, and like, the, or land, like Orange County does it, but to have it, I was, I'm perfectly happy with us being at, at the end. I think it belongs there. Um, cameras, no cameras. Uh, you know, just to be completely honest, I, you know, we, there are people who come and, and they just feel like this is their time to speak, not to us, they can always speak to us. They can speak to us more effectively. I always feel like in email, in phone call, because then you're not limited by time. We can respond to you. Um, you can be sure that you're it's heard or read or, um, but I, it just goes back to the purpose of public participation, which is to communicate with us on something that mainly with things that we're going to be voting on. Um, and there are things that come up, yes, but sometimes, honestly, it's frustrating to me that people wait and hold on to issues. And as I may be getting off a little, top, a little off topic of that particular topic. People <laughs> hold on to issues. That happened to us very recently. Someone held on to an issue until they could come and speak to us at a board meeting about it. When in reality, if they had brought it up to us or to an administrator or to Dr. Mullins, who is very good about getting back with um, our community members, we could have handled it faster. And that's a frustration to me because that, that is not effective uh, work for us, but we're at a disadvantage because we can't, we couldn't have done anything about it until we were aware. If we had been made aware before, which we all have publicly available phone numbers and public available email addresses, those situations could have been handled. And I much prefer to see that to come to, to hold on to things like that and to bring them to a board meeting. Um, it's not even just about our disadvantage. It's just not a good way to work. It's not a good way to operate. Um, and so if turning off the cameras limits that, that is the plus side. If um, keeping them on uh, keeps us in a place of trust with the community where we think that we have lost some, whether deserved or undeserved, um, then, then keep them on. I, but there is, 
you know, I hate to be, feel like it's, I just said, you know, the pros and cons of, uh, pros of both sides, but I, that's what I feel. I mean, I, I don't feel super strongly one way or the other, except for the, the time being at the end of the meeting. So, Ms. Campbell, just for clarification, you feel it's appropriate to have the time at the end of the meeting? Yes. Okay. I just didn't want to yes. misconstrue that. Okay. Sorry. I didn't Ms. know. So, I already explained that maybe move some of these numbers around. Um, if nobody else wants to move to it, we can move on to the next thing. I just didn't know. I just felt like at 20 minutes, going to one, 20 people at one minute, you know what I mean? We start to get to a point where we're just, it's not enough. I, I think we could go to an hour. And if I could get, you know, I thought about this structure a little bit different um, today when I was thinking this thing through. So that's all. If I have any other support, great. If not, we just move on to the next one. Ms. McDougall, you're asking to speak? Yes, please. So um, we talked about this before. We all kind of hashed this out. I am fine with how the, the numbers are at this point. And also, if you listen to some of our state meetings over and over again, they're a minute. So I think we are very generous with three, two, and one. I, I think we're within our guidelines and I think we're giving people who want to speak. As Ms. Campbell said, there's so many ways to reach out to us, to, to get to us, besides their three, two, or one minute here on, in the board room. So that's just my two cents. Sure. Ms. Jenkins, did you? Yeah, um, I wholeheartedly agree with Ms. Campbell and Ms. McDougall, but um, I will say, I. If there was a third support for it, I have no problem with extending it because at least it's limiting it to an hour. It's not something crazy absurd. It's still it's still shrinking down what we were kind of trying to avoid um, this whole time. So I'm 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 definitely not against it. And I mean, if there was a third person to support it, I would go along with it. But I'm comfortable with either one. I, I'm on both sides, like Katie was for the other three. <laughs> <laughs> so just to clarify, Mr. Gibbs, we don't start the whole six week process again. It just means that this particular workshop and information meeting gets you know, extended to the next meeting. So the vote, the earliest the vote could be would be on the on November. The, it would it would be pushed back again because it's got to be 14 days before your first public hearing. So that's going to push us before we can get it advertised, probably beyond the October meeting. So the first one would be in November. And then your second and a final would be December. So you'd be looking at about a two month delay. Right. Since we only have two meetings left after October 26. Mr. Gibbs, can you um, can you clarify, is there flexibility in the policy for us to address some of the concerns that have been brought forward by the board members at individual meetings in the event that the opportunity arises? Or what the extending time? Yeah, there's the, time the board or... can always, I, I did leave flexibility in there for, you know, whether the board wishes to extend time, it can certainly do that. Do if that. Uh, for whatever reason there was a hot topic and we had a lot of people uh, and you wanted to say, all right, everybody's getting two minutes tonight, the board can vote to do that. Um, and as far as uh, board business after, I did write into the policy, as Ms. Campbell said, once the cameras go off, no board business can take place. The only thing that occurs is an adjournment, which is noted in the minutes by Ms. Escobar. And once the last comment's over, that's the only board action that's taking place once those cameras go off. So um, based on those things, it would be, and, and I'm not opposed to the things that you all have brought up, but I, I don't wanna drag out this policy revision until December or January. Um, so based on that information and our ability to be flexible on the, the timing, um, I, I personally am going to stand on the side of let's move forward with what we have. And if we need to, you know, if we find it's not working and we need to revise again in the future, we certainly have the opportunity to do that. Um, and I, I totally get where you're coming from, Mr. Susan. And I think there's the opportunity for you to request that, you okay. know, at individual meetings. I just, I'm, I think we need to get this in place. Okay. Would be my, my personal thought. And I, I, I know that you, you meant this, um, Ms. Jenkins, but I just want, because there's been a lot of misunderstanding about our purpose in this, I, about as far as the length of it. I think it's just important for us to reiterate that this isn't just about, we don't want to listen to people. This isn't about that at all. But we have people who are coming and sitting out there for hours, sometimes with small children, but you know, just for hours waiting to hear, waiting to speak. 
And we also have staff that if we have a meeting that goes past 11 o'clock, they can't clean up, they can't stack chairs, they're, they're here too. So it's, this isn't really about keeping our, you know, not wanting to hear people, it's about keeping our board meetings to a reasonable length where we can get the business done that we are here to do, where people can be heard in a reasonable amount of time. I don't really think it's very reasonable to make someone sit there for four hours waiting to speak. Um, and hopefully we can we can shorten that up but to the good of our community, to the good of our staff, and, and to the good of just getting the work done. So I just think it would, I think we are all there. I mean, I'm seeing shake, he, shaking heads. That's that's where we were. I think it's been misconstrued a little bit in the public, but um, those are those are our, our goals is to, to to streamline that for everyone's benefit. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Campbell, for those comments. And you know, I, I would even add that um, we've we've had some marathon board meetings, and I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like I am at my best after we've sat in these seats for 12 hours and are at that point trying to make a decision. So. Absolutely, for efficiency, for getting through the, the work of the board for our community so that they have a reasonable experience when they come to the board meeting to speak. Um, but I, I think we also have to own the fact that sometimes we push because we feel obligated to do so. Um, but we, you know, we've got to be reasonable with ourselves too. And, and staff who's been here, you know, oftentimes they get here at five o'clock in the morning and they're still here with us at 11 o'clock at night. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Mr. Susan. I didn't know. And thank you for all that. Um, I didn't know if there's a way that we can make amendments to or when, because I'm hearing that part of it is, is, hey, let's get this thing through. We can adopt and, and amend. But part of what we do, and, and I'll be the first person to ad admit it, um, we as individual board members also get up here and pontificate, right? So I'm a problem with it. But here's one of the things that I saw when I was reading this thing through, and I apologize about not bringing it in earlier. But if we're going to limit the people and the public to like one minute, maybe we can do sort of the same thing to agree that, hey, we'll limit our speech to, you know what I mean, like we'll start to try to get our arguments and our scopes down. We talked about a response and a counter, right? Maybe there's an opportunity to talk in that space so that a guy like me doesn't go on for 25 minutes. And I'll be the first person to admit it. Like I am not, I am self-censoring myself, but I'm trying to find some sort of a balance between the two so that... They don't feel like, hey, you can only talk for an hour, a minute, so that we can just talk for the next four. Does that make sense to you? And maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe that's our role as a board, but that was just something I was thinking, and I didn't know if you guys wanted to talk about it. That's all. Well, we put it mm -hmm. So, we, well, yeah, we we do in the in the Roberts Rules information that uh, the Pam sent out to you guys, but loving, lovingly, Mr. Susan. So one of the things that we put into place with the new Roberts Rules information to kind of streamline things was that when, when there's a motion and there's a second and we open for discussion, someone speaks in favor and then someone speaks against, if there's no one else to speak in favor or against, then we call the question right. and go with it. But what has to happen or what has been happening, and I know why it's happening because it's just the, the process we've followed, right? is I get a motion, I get a second, I open for discussion, the person who put the motion forward speaks, then Ms. Jenkins speaks and or Ms. McDougall speaks or and then I say is there anyone to speak against and you would be the against speaker and you say no wait we'll listen and hear what Ms. McDougall has to say before so we're not going for against which will allow us to to like mitigate you know what I mean so yeah. yes I get what you're saying and I think we can all do our best to try to, you know, focus to that. We do have a time limit in the in the Roberts Rules information that was sent out. We didn't do the three minute limit per. Um, yeah. yeah. That's fine. As long as we just sort of let everybody know that hey, we're on board with you. We're trying to move through this. We're limiting you, and we're going to do a good job of trying to limit ourselves and our pontification. And I'll be the first person to admit that I'm one of the violators, you. besides Miss Campbell. <laughs> I'm setting a she timer does. for you she tonight. She actually talks more than me. I'm convinced. But um, I've actually timed both of you. I did. I did, uh, I did just want to bring that up. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can I just speak to that real quick? Mm -hmm. um, I hear what you're saying, and I understand it's coming from the standpoint of you know trying to make the public 
feel like we're not silencing them while allowing us to speak so much. But I think we also need to acknowledge the fact that our board business has to be done in the sunshine. This is the only time we can talk about these things with each other. And I've been really clear about this from the get go to all of you. Um, I think when we start limiting our speech between each other, it's kind of a dangerous territory um, because the public in all honesty, like Ms. Campbell said, I believe it was Ms. Campbell, sorry. Um, but. Uh, you know, they have many opportunities to come speak to us. It's not the only opportunity for them to come speak to us, but a lot of times this is the only opportunity for us to speak to each other about those conversations. And so, um, you know, as frustrating as it is to hear, you know, 25 minutes of speaking, it is really your only opportunity to speak about it. And so um, it's kind of dangerous when you start, start to consider limiting it. So, thanks. And if I may, part of the problem we're running into is because of COVID, we've had a lot of non two way dialogues with our public. Um, we've in the past gone to community meetings, we've done all these things, but they've been kind of restricted. So one of the things that we've dealt with, which hopefully we won't be dealing with much longer, um, or we have mitigation factors in the future that are that are there, um, is the two way dialogue, we need to be able to get to our public and we haven't really been able to do that. So maybe that along with some of this other stuff alleviates and gets them the opportunity. I think that's a great observation, Mr. Susan and Dr. Mullins and I just had this conversation the other day about the importance of taking advantage of those community opportunities to have that dialogue. I know I've done a, a few, uh, our leadership gatherings and our um, minority and BPOC meeting and, uh, you know, just trying to make sure that I'm available and accessible and out there to have those conversations and they've been very appreciated. Um, along with, you know, getting, reconnecting with our Rotary Clubs and our Kiwanis Clubs and our all of all of those folks. Um, yeah. You know, I think we have some great, great information here in our strategic plan to to share with our community and the progress we've made even during a pandemic. And so um, the more we can reach out and open those doors for dialogue, I think the better off we, we all are going to be. So great, great input, good conversation. Appreciate it all.